Hello, everybody. This is going to be a quick demo on how to create classes which implement interfaces, uh, specifically the iterable and iterator interfaces. And in this case, we're going to um, adapt arrays to be iterables uh, through these classes, iter array iterable and array iterator. And so if I run this client, I can see it immediately throws this not yet implemented exception. You'll get used to this in this class. Um, if I click on uh, the sector, you can see where um, it first hit that error, and then you tunnel in and you can see it's failing immediately on the constructor. So we go back to our client, we create this array, um, Bobby, Mario, and Wayne. Um, we're gonna pass it into this array iterable constructor, excuse me, and um, then we need to, to make it so that this thing works. And we can see array iterable is a generic uh, class. It uh, takes any type, we'll call it E, and it's gonna implement iterable. Um, and Iterable has uh, one and only one uh, abstract method called iterator, which is supposed to create a new iterator. And so, um, see, we have these two methods. Well, one's a constructor and one's a method. And uh, we're passing this array. We're supposed to iterate over it. And so the first thing I'm going to do is create um, a private final piece uh, field. And we'll just hang on to that array. Now, when I come into the constructor, um, I'm going to say this dot array equals array. So I need to um, qualify this with this because uh, both the field and the parameter have the same name. Um, and I just want to hang on to that value because down here, in my iterator, I need to create a new one every time. So uh, when some, anyone calls iterator, I want to be able to create a new iterator. Now I'm going to make an array iterator out of what do you know, my field. And so this is sort of a, a pretty common pattern of iterables. Uh, a lot of the work is done by the iterator. The iterable just kind of hangs onto the data. It never has to change it. Um, it's sort of, it, you know, and a lot of times, you know, the iterable will be immutable. In this case, this one is. Um, and this iterator is going to have to change. That one's going to be, because uh, um, it's going to change as it moves over the array. Now, what I did there was I control clicked and tunneled into array iterator. You can see it's also, not yet implemented. And in this case, I need to keep track of a couple of pieces of information. One is the array itself. Uh, make that final. Uh, now it's not gonna prevent us from mutating the contents of the array, but it still makes a nice signal that, oh, by the way, this is something we um, don't need to change ever. So uh, we'll again, hang on to the array. Now, because the iterator changes its state as has next, well, more specifically, as next is called over and over again, um, we're going to also need to keep track of some index, sort of where we are in the array. I can start that off at zero. Now, let me declare this field also index. This one we're not going to make final because that would mean that we could never change this int value, which of course uh, we're going to need to uh, do has next um, is going to get called over and over again, theoretically, when you're using it, uh, because uh, to find out if there's any more left. And for us, the uh, whether or not it has a next is whether or not the index is less than the array length. So as long as that index is not past the end of the array, uh, people should feel free to call uh, next as much as they want. Um, now, what we can do here is say like, well, first of all, we can check to see, um, you know, what this thing is supposed to do. Uh, if I tunnel into, if I go to my superclass iterator, I can find that if anybody ever calls this um, and it's not in a good state, uh, we should throw this unsupported operation exception, or excuse me, um, that's for a move, illegal state exception. That makes sense. It's like in a bad state if we ever get outside of it. So we should check if has next here, right? Um, our client should be calling it first, but in case they don't, right? Um, if they, they we don't have a next, we want to throw a new illegal state exception. Just to be well-behaved and perform respect. Now the real meat of this issue is going to be now trying to figure out um, what to return from next and how to update our value. So I'm gonna grab and hang on to a value of 
the result. Like, let's just get a local variable that is array at index. And I'm going to return that result. Now, if I just did this, I would always stay at index one. I would always keep returning the first value or the zero value in the array. And I would never, it would never not have next and we just loop forever whenever we use one of these things. And so what I need to do is say plus plus index before I leave. Now when I come over to this array iterable client and I run it, you can see it's gonna print out the contents of this string array when I create one and this uh, integer array when I do the array iterable of the numbers. Now I have also provided this bonus array iterator client it shows how the iterators are used. It does the exact same thing. Um, in many ways, um, this for this iterating for loop is uh, syntactic sugar for just uh, this code right here, which um, creates an iterator from the names and then uses over and over again has next and next. Um, and you can see it behaves exactly the same. And so this was a quick demo on how to um, create uh, two classes. Uh, one implementing iterable and one implementing iterator, how they work, which ones uh, don't have to change and can stay immutable, and which one uh, specifically the iterator, uh, which um, does have to change as you iterate over the array.